is Framer taking over the Webflow market and should you transition your marketing website over to Framer? Let's find out in just a few minutes. In this video, I'll go over pricing, speed of implementation, flexibility and scalability of the platform and community in plugins so that you don't have to. Let's dive directly into it. My name is Orosh and I'm the founder and CEO of Flow Ninja. And as you can also see behind me, we've been also awarded to be Webflow Enterprise Partner of 2023. So my opinion can be a little bit biased. But I'm talking from the perspective of the clients we're working with. Our current clients are startups which have more than 20 million in funding and enterprises with more than 250 million in revenue per year. So that's exactly why I want to compare Framer and Webflow for these specific power users. These are the websites and marketers who basically have a lot of traffic on their website. They need a lot of scalability. They need a lot of flexibility for their website. And they also have pretty big marketing teams in the end. Because I do personally believe that this is the place where you need to start really thinking about the platform you're gonna be using for your marketing website. Because that's the thing that can make or break your business, your marketing initiatives, and the scale of which your business is gonna scale to in the end. Let's jump directly to pricing. I see a lot of people comparing just apples to apples without actually figuring out what are the feature sets you're getting on both Framer and Webflow. So that's why I want to compare their pricing systems and also see what you're getting for the price itself. If we compare the base price, Framer is 40 bucks per month where Webflow is 49. On that case, Webflow is going to be base a little bit more of an expensive option. And I guess if you're one of these companies I'm talking to, 100 bucks per year is probably not going to make a huge difference. But when the price differentiation starts becoming a little bit bigger is if you look at some of the add-ons which Framer has. For example, on Webflow, you're going to be having unlimited search out of the box. On Framer, you're going to be paying 20 bucks per month for that. Then when we move to the CMS, Webflow is going to have a more powerful CMS out of the box. But on top of that, it's not going to charge anything additional to a point. Because on Framer, you're going to want to pay if you want to have more than 10 CMS collections. On Webflow, on the business plan, you're going to have a limit of 40 CMS collections. Just because of that, that's also going to be an additional cost, which is going to be $90. And that's where the price increase starts getting a little bit steeper. Additionally, there's also a difference of how many visitors can visit the website. On Framer is 200,000, on Webflow is 300,000. So you're gonna have 100,000 more people being able to visit the Webflow website for the standard price of 49 per month. Framer is gonna actually charge you $100 per month when you start scaling your visitor account and when you start scaling your website, which can be a pretty steep increase if you take a look at like the other pricing increases that you would have. And the final part is custom proxy setup. This is something which I'm not personally quite sure about, but I, I've not used this on Framer. I know that on Webflow, we do this for our clients for free when it comes to the monthly side. We just have an implementation fee when it comes to that. But for some reason, Framer lists uh, a $350 fee for doing this. I'm not quite sure honestly I don't want to say anything that I haven't used personally so this is something that you would need to take into consideration when making a decision and of course now you see that the price differentiation before you go to enterprise is a lot bigger than it was initially so that's why I feel like if you're a business which is kind of scaling which is a bigger business which is a startup or enterprise webflow pricing is the one which is going to take the lead here of course if you're a designer if you're a smaller kind of business owner or whatever framer is probably going to be the choice and I don't want this review to be or you choose framer or Webflow, but I'm always going to say, hey, Framer is better for this, Webflow is better for this. And I do personally believe that Webflow's pricing is better for bigger businesses. Speed of implementation. This is where these platforms are completely different. Framer takes the design-led approach, where Webflow takes the development approach. Both are really, really good. And like, don't get me wrong, like somebody might like the design approach more, somebody might like the development approach more. Personally, for us at the studio, we like the development approach more, but that can sometimes take a little bit more time. So this is definitely where Framer is gonna be taking the lead if speed of implementation is the only thing you care about scalability and flexibility. Both Framer and Webflow have the option to add custom code in head and body, have the option to add like React and also kind of JS code inside of the platform. So in that case, they're tied together. But I do personally believe that you have maybe 10 times more flexibility in Webflow just because of that development approach when it comes to the platform itself. This is something to take into consideration. You're gonna probably build a website much faster when it comes to kind of Framer and like go to market faster, but after Afterwards, if you're a bigger company, you're going to need to have a lot more flexibility, a lot more versatility, like in the toolbox itself. And this is where Webflow has a lot more features. I'm not talking a little, it has a lot more features. If we just take a look at one thing, Framer currently does not support like a CMS API, whereas Webflow does. 
And this is one of the things we're doing for most of our clients in order to have programmatic SEO campaigns, to send the data from CMS, to get the data back to the CMS and do more things on that matter. So that's why I feel like if scalability and flexibility is really important for you, that's where Webflow is gonna take the lead and it's gonna allow you to actually run your business without hitting any constraints. Because I usually compare Webflow to traditional front-end development. Because with time, when you get good with a platform, there are gonna be no barriers for you that you're gonna be hitting on the platform itself. Community and plugins. Both platforms, Framer and Webflow, have the plugin marketplace. Framer has a lot of officially supported plugins like HubSpot, Intercom, and many more. But that's where the platform stops. On the other side, on the Webflow side, you're gonna have official supported uh, kind of apps published by HubSpot and stuff like that. But on top of that, you're also gonna have a lot of free resources you can clone from the community, which add like either custom code or add a lot of custom functionality to Webflow. And on top of that, you have a fully open apps marketplace. That's where you're gonna be able to find all of the pieces that you're missing out of Webflow directly into the platform itself. And on top of that, they're also verified by Webflow. So you don't have to be scared about installing, a, let's say, an analytics plugin called DataGoat. I'm not talking that we made it because every single commit that we need to make and push to the apps marketplace is going to be verified by Webflow so that it doesn't interfere with your website itself. And for this, I do believe that Webflow has a stronger community and a stronger kind of third party support compared to Framer. And that's where Webflow is going to be taking the lead. So what's my final verdict on Framer to Webflow? I don't think that there is choose Framer or choose Webflow. There might be companies where you use both Framer and Webflow and startups in your ecosystem because like marketers might have some pages they need to spin up really, really quickly and they need to have like the, the flexibility there. You're probably gonna wanna have your core marketing website, which is gonna be scalable. And that's just my opinion. It might be a little bit biased, but I do believe that from our experience of working with like, a lot of these big companies, which kind of like our enterprise partner of the year showcases because we worked with more than 10 enterprises last year just on, on Webflow, I do really believe that there is a place where you start getting into more and more complexity where you know, Webflow is probably gonna be taking the lead over Framer. Looking at that, I would love to hear your opinion. You can leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. What is better, Framer or Webflow? But make sure to think about this specific use case I'm describing currently.